What is going on, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to the show, everybody. Isn't it? <laughs> so, hot off the press, we have an article by Colin Liddell at neocrat.blogspot.com. Ladies and gentlemen, and I want to take a look at it. It's pretty spicy, dude. Pretty spicy. So, first of all, shit, I neglected to put the link in the description. It's going to go in, Colin, as soon as I've finished this thing. It'll be in the description if you want to go and check it out yourself. Otherwise, it's at neocrat.blogspot.com. All the Wignat dogs are out now. Now that I've started streaming... We're going to have people shouting Jay-Z out the back and all kinds of stuff, ladies and gentlemen. So, look, there's no love lost between Colin Liddell and Richard Spencer, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Colin Liddell was once for part of the triad of alternative right, the originators. They're responsible for this whole mess, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but as I've said, we remember... The three of them, Colin Liddell, Richard Spencer, and Andy Nowicki, fondly. I make no bones about being a fan of Richard Spencer, like I'm a fan of Millennial Wells, <laughs> like I'm a fan of Greg Johnson, like I'm a fan of Jared Taylor, like I'm a fan of all these big characters. I'm a respecter of the big characters, and I'm a disrespecter of the low tumbleweed characters that we have replaced them with today I long for a time of big characters in the alt-right no not the alt-right I'm not alt-right disavow Boy. Um, so let's anyway let's take a look at this it's about Richard Spencer ladies and gentlemen oh no is that Richard Spencer hold on that's Richard Spencer, ladies and gentlemen. Don't know who that is. <laughs> so, 
Uh, it's at neocrat.blogspot.com, ladies and gentlemen. That's where it is. Right there, dude. And we're going to take a look at it together. Uh, I've got me reading out all this stuff, dude. Uh, it's given me visions back to when I was at school and I hated seeing the teacher just put up on the on the whiteboard well we had over overhead projectors um, by the time I was at school ladies and gentlemen actually they were electronic whiteboards so um, but anyway they just put words up and read them out so we're not going to do that but anyway let's here we go Colin Liddell reports there is no smoking gun as yet that Richard Spencer has been turned and is working hand in glove with the feds or other shadowy Antifa organisations that seek to police the right-wing critosphere. However, there is an increasing amount of chatter and circumstantial evidence that points squarely in that direction. Spencer, of course, famously founded the alt-right and even pushed it in a clearly Nazi direction from 2015 to 2018 before mysteriously backtracking around 2019 even to the point of supporting Joe Biden in the 2020 presidential election. This was also echoed by the actions of those close to Spencer such as Evan McLaren, the former head of Spencer's National Policy Institute. A recent conversation on Twitter involving a number of participants including Antifa author Shane Burley, Michael Edison Hayden, a senior investigative reporter and spokesperson for the SPLC, and Heterodorks, a transsexual podcaster, showed a remarkably sympathetic and knowing, knowing attitude to Richard Spencer. After Heterodorks questioned the sincerity of Spencer's recent move, to the centre. Hayden, that's Michael Hayden of the SPLC, was quick to leap Booyah! to his defence. And I've done a little further digging. I can add some, I can add a little bit of extra material to Colin's article right here. I've found the original tweet which seems to have been deleted. That Colin is referring to. Somebody had screenshotted it. I found it. Heterodox is saying, and he's replying to Michael Aiden here Richard Spencer is not a died in the wall fascist, as he now portrays himself as someone who has disavowed white nationalism and describes himself as pretty much a liberal on a variety of issues. Do you believe him? Not me. I consider him unreliable. What do I think is more likely, that Richard Spencer is an honest dealer and we should take his words at face value? Or do I think Richard Spencer would say things to provoke responses or sow chaos? Hmm. So... This was an original... You're, you're getting more context there. I realise it's not the one there. But this was the original thread. And then... Here's the uh, the screenshot... Of what Colin is now uh, reporting. The reply from Hayden was... Bear with me. Oh, so Colin's got more of this thread. This is completely different. So Hayden, in original reply, knowing considerably more about Richard and his activism than you do, I would suggest treating the subject with a little more humility. Here, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. Hmm. And then we can see here on this tweet, Michael, it doesn't surprise me at all that you prescribe humility for others, but since you're the expert... Do you believe that Richard Spencer is now moderate, as he claims? And Michael Hayden replied, not talking about this publicly. But you don't know what's going on, do you? So, it's interesting, isn't it? I'll carry on reading this, ladies and gentlemen. Das Wright says, I rule the world. 
That's right, dude. Heterodox. Oh. Colin then reports this tweet right here. I continue with Colin's reporting. Like I said, this is not a smoking gun. But the only way to read this for an intelligent person is that there is clearly some sort of understanding between Richard Spencer and the SPLC and beyond, i.e. the Feds. This would explain Richard Spencer's radical ideological U-turn of a couple of years ago and might even be one of the reasons behind his divorce from his strongly Putinist Russian wife Nina. There is some evidence that Spencer effectively self-destructed his own marriage. <coughs> oh, we've got some spice here, ladies and gentlemen. For example, by accusing his wife of having an affair with former comrade Colin Liddell on her frequent trips to Japan. Boya! <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> Is that common knowledge there, Colin? It may also explain his absurd embrace of an Apollonian identity. A clear smokescreen technique to cover the blatant ideological idea illogicality of his turn on a dime transformation from Nazi tard to a NATO and Biden supporter. From the conversation quoted, it is clearly, we're talking about this, from the conversation quoted, it is clear that the understanding between Spencer and the SPLC feds involves them going easy on him. The next logical question to ask, therefore, is what is Spencer giving them in return? Apart from pro globo homo takes, does it involve doxing information? And unfortunately, Colin, you spelt doxing with two X's there. I've got to pull you up on that, dude. It's one X. We all know that. You're showing your age there. On does it also involve doxing information on the hundreds of dissident right personalities that Spencer has interacted with over the years? It would indeed be odd for the feds to cut a deal with someone. That didn't involve that kind of disclosure. Colin cooked Dicky. Yeah, let's just read that part again, dude. There is some evidence that Spencer effectively self-destructed his own marriage. For example, by accusing his wife of having an affair with former comrade Colin Liddell on her frequent trips to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> it's all at neocrat.blogspot.com ladies and gentlemen 45,000 page views so that's exciting isn't it everybody now I do have I, look if you're looking for an investigative reporter reporter journalist to give you the extra contest calling you dog here that's right then you need to look no further than right here, ladies and gentlemen, because this was a topic of conversation on Joel Davis's Telegram earlier today. And I was there, ladies and gentlemen, in order to capture some uh, goings on for you and report them. This is a public Telegram group. I'm not putting out anything nobody wants to be revealed. They're probably hoping for it, ladies and gentlemen. They don't get any other good press, do they? So, Eric Stryker was over there. No! Not the game, not the gay porn star, the one from TRS, and this was brought up, and Striker says, and this is a very, this is, a real intelligent take by Striker, actually, wait for it, as repulsive as Richard is, his position is ideologically consistent. If you believe in individualist Nietzscheanism and elite theory, why would you be on the right instead of a libtard where the power actually lies? And this is what Keith Woods said, isn't it, uh, about academic agent the other day. Why is 
if academic agent believes in elite theory, and we know he's um, Tony Blair's biggest bum chum at the moment, why isn't he just switching sides? So anyway, let's uh, take a little bit more what happened. They then start talking about Richard Spence, uh, about Nick Fuentes as well. And his ties with Laura Luma. Uh, Joel says about Fuentes, OK, fine, the people who criticise his conduct generally are the same people who misrepresent his rhetoric and this ruins their credibility because it shows that they don't actually study him directly but get their information from third parties because Joel is um, amicable with Fuentes he says I'm basically quite relaxed about the situation actually if Nick decides to cut ties with me because I'm too radical or whatever that's his prerogative but I don't see why he would even be friendly to Keith and I in the first place if he's going to end up doing that and he told striker dude you're letting your personal bias cloud your judgment on this nick is promoting a lot of good ideas to the kids whatever his fault ah oh, that's an objective fact dude and more look like, this is just adh in the order of adhd so you'll just have to bear with me. Talking about Spencer, talking about Fuentes, all in a big comment, flicking by at 90 miles an hour. It's hard to keep up. Joel says about Richard. Richard became foil for CNN libtards to do hit pieces about evil Nazi Trump supporters. Nick is reaching young kids with a message about <coughs> power, race realism and anti-globalism. Reminder, oh, somebody saw Aziti, reminds us that Richard <laughs> Spencer still has a Twitter account <laughs> and has never had more than 70k followers. Just to be compliant with British law out of an abundance of caution, I'd like to say I am reporting the news and even if I find such things funny, they might be considered slurs in my country and I'd have to disavow them. But I do claim journalists privilege to report the news, okay. Stryker says about uh, Nick, uh, about Spencer again. Spencer, eh, Spencer has a piece of shit. I can't do an American accent. But Groypers leaked video of him to Roberta Kaplan and the FBI specifically to help Jews destroy him in court. Allegedly. Reporting the news here. What else do I have? Stryker also said, Richard created many problems for himself, but the split was not just about him. It was an ideological split. A banana split. The Fuentes wing was overtly anti-Nazi and anti-fascist and wanted to do star-spangled, outright Trump conservatism over continue building momentum after Charlottesville. There, with a low case C. Joel Davis says, Strike you'll learn your bias get to you. Strike says, Do you think a normal person is going to watch a video of Fuentes on the Blaze TV talking like a baby, making Michael Jackson style comments about how girls are icky and do anything but make fun of him? I don't know that. Done that. Done that. Oh, and Joe was talking about uh, the fact that Nick Fuentes endorsed Laura Loma there. Base Laura Loma. And he says the endorsement isn't consistent with his ideology, no. Which is why I think it was a bad move, but he rationalised it as a strategic endorsement because she was anti-immigration. And Joel's chat proceeded to give him the right like shit about that. <laughs> Welcome, Goose. Welcome, Marco Coletti Spaghetti. Welcome, That's Right. Welcome, Tom Anderson there. Welcome, Alex Woodrow. 
Welcome Jupiter X Clips. Welcome Sandwich Bar. Welcome Chiggy's Cob there. Dude. Got you all, haven't I? This is Michael Hayden at the SPLC. I don't know much about him. This is who supposedly Richard Spencer's in cahoots with. If you just come in, I've read already read the article out. You missed it. Missed it. I'll have to go back. It's from Colin Liddell at neocrack.blogspot.com. It's got some spice in it. We found out that Colin Liddell has cooked Richard Spencer's wife. They've been having it off. Over in Japan. Some secret shagging was going on. Allegedly. Don't sue me, boys. This is that heterodox podcast who's, I believe, a transgender them. Um, this is Michael Hayden of the SPLC who is now accused of knowing inside information about Richard Spencer that he's not willing to talk about publicly, look, not talking about this publicly but you don't know what's going on when asked directly about Richard Spencer so I don't know much about this Michael Hayden or what the SPLC is, but I did see I did have a look at his Twitter account and it seems to be full of hate, he seems to be a purveyor of hate ladies and gentlemen that was my takeaway there, his Twitter account is just full of hate retweeting hate and he, in this tweet here, Michael Hayden can be seen to say, these people are vile, and he's talking about the child, the Covington kid child there, look. So I can only assume that Michael Edison Hayden is a pusher of hate on the internet. And that's shocking. And I don't like it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. So I think that's it. I'm super busy. Do you want to see a picture of Richard Spencer when he was younger? What do you think about that? think about that no that's not Richard Spencer ladies and gentlemen it's Keir Starmer of the Labour Party in the United Kingdom isn't it <laughs> that was Keir Starmer not Richard Spencer ladies and gentlemen come on get with the program isn't it can't you tell the difference come on If I mix them up, like that cup and ball game, would you be able to find them again? <laughs> uh, it's an old joke. It's an old joke. I'm recycling them. Look here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still growing tomatoes in October. Outside, ladies and gentlemen. That's right, outside. You really should follow my gardening tips, shouldn't you? Seraphim Goose says, I'm a fat, stupid burger. <laughs> okay, dude, okay. This is a place for you, dude. This is a place for you. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen. I, before I go, I'm just going to thank Joel Davis for shouting me out. Yet again, I want to point out, right, to any e-celebrity on the internet, if you want your clout measuring, then all you have to do is post a Stephen J. James video on your Twitter or on your Telegram, and I will be the measure of your clout. I've measured Joel Davis's clout as uh, approximately 65 subscribers and uh, about 1,200 views. Okay, that's Joel Davis's clout. So what I want to say to the rest of you internet celebrities 
is step up to the plate. Are you afraid? All you have to do to demonstrate your clout is to share a Stephen J. James video and then I'll get the metrics together and we'll compare the level of your clout. Joel Davis has been big enough to step up. What's wrong with the rest of you, ladies and gentlemen? That's right. I'm going to get out of here before the 30-minute mark. Okay. So I want to thank you all for coming. I want to direct your attention to that like button down below. Every like is a hero, ladies and gentlemen, isn't it? And I will see you later, everybody. Thank you very much for coming. I appreciate you. Later, everybody.